Hello YouTube, how you guys doing? Smoking here with you guys today, my giant billiard. Let me see how to get it up here. There you go. This is my giant billiard, rusticated, made by Mark Tinsky. And uh, it's a pearlized amber stem. And uh, real nice, big O sucker. That's probably a two hour smoke right there for me. Oh, we're having a fine day today. I'm over here with one of my sons in the faith, Dave Wood. You're here. And my son, Nick. Just a little while, Nick and I are going to make a video for you, too, because we're celebrating a belated Tolkien birthday today and having one of our annual Hobbit dinners at my friend Dave's house in his garage. He's got it outrigged so that it looks like Brie, basically. And so uh, uh, we'll show you a little bit of that as well and perhaps create more envy in you guys. Shout out to uh, a new pipes, uh, pipe maker that I've recently engaged in on uh, Facebook. His name is Mike Novak. Mike's got some gorgeous pipes. He's got some gorgeous uh, uh, Cumberland stems. Uh, I really love his pipe with a Cumberland stem on it. And so you need to take a, a look at Mike Novak's pipes. Very, very... Uh, different kind of pipes um, than the ones I've seen but artistically very nice now many of you more discreet discretionary uh, men out there who know intelligence when you see it have begun to refer to me as the doctor of love <laughs> They're laughing only because they agree. He saved my butt many a time. And uh, I have a video out where I'm talk, I talk about the difference between men and women's brains, and especially the function of the corpus callosum, which puts us, puts us at a great disadvantage when it comes to getting our thoughts into words. And so if you haven't seen that video yet, you might want to check it out. But I, I've been promising more wisdom and the arts of love and the differences between the female and male mystique and so I just want to talk with you guys a little bit about the hormonal cocktail that goes into the hardwiring of the masculine personality versus the feminine personality and uh, and so uh, let me just talk to you a little bit about this then male hormonal cocktail in a minute I'll talk to you about the female hormonal cocktail. Now men are driven by the dominant male hormone called testosterone or the big T. And testosterone is the chauffeur, if you will, uh, hormone that drives all the other male hormones and masculine hormones. It drives maleness and masculinity. Males have up to 25 times more testosterone than females. Surprise, surprise. The high testosterone levels cause both men and boys to feel good. We have high testosterone levels. It makes us feel jazzed, hyped, psyched. Yelling at the TV. Yelling for our favorite sports team. Yelling at the referee or attempting to drive a car faster than somebody else playing sports and competing, etc., increases male testosterone levels, and this makes us feel good. Teenage boys experience around seven major testosterone surges a day, which is why if they were like me at 16, they're walking around with their notebook in front of their crotch all the time because you're, you always got a heart on. Well, the reason why is because you've got seven surges a day going on. And some of you that are men like me at 56 still have them seven surges of hormones going on every time. <laughs> but, any respect, it drives, it drives the competitive, aggressive nature in men and boys. I mean, I could leave my sons standing to tell them to stand by a wall or by a fence. I'll be right back, so just stay there and don't do nothing. I'll come back and they'd be having a pissing contest or something, spitting contest. They'll make a contest or competition out of anything. What causes boys to always have to do that? Testosterone. Mr. T. 
Mm. Now there's passengers in the testosterone bus. And one of those passengers is called vasopressin or vasopressin. And vasopressin is an aggression chemical and it's found in a little organ in the male brain called the amygdala. It's one of the emotion aggression centers of the brain and uh, vasopressin is the hormone that regulates centers of the limbic system. Vasopressin is predominantly involved in marking territory in sexual aggression. Vasopressin in dogs is what causes a male dog to go around and hike its leg at every darn thing that it can see on its walk. It's because it's marking his territory. He's, he's territorial. It's what makes men territorial. It causes us to both build our houses and want to protect our houses. It, it causes us to want to take more land and conquer more civilizations. It's vasopressin. And there's another one, one of my favorite in the chemical cocktail, another passenger in the bus, dopamine. A lot of women will not be surprised that a, there is a predominant hormonal uh, cocktail in men called dopamine because it's got both the words dope and the words mean in it. <laughs> dopamine plays a key role in sexual aggression. When dopamine is removed from the male brain activity, the male loses all sexual desire and ceases even looking for a sexual partner. And so you can castrate a man without ever physically cutting off his boys. And the way you do it is just suck out the dopamine. Testosterone, vasopressin, dopamine are hormones predominantly linked to male sex and aggression and hardwire males to be geared toward the masculine sexual impetus which focuses on three things, foreplay, intercourse, and ejaculation. Female sexuality is determined by a hormone chemistry that steers them toward bonding imperatives. And so the, for them, they're driven to want to cuddle and show empathy and exclusive commitment to one mate. And this is what drives a woman's sexual impetus. So it's real easy to figure out a man and a male mystique when it comes to uh, his relationship with a woman that he deeply loves or deeply wants. He has this inbred uh, search and destroy kind of mechanism that is driving him toward foreplay, intercourse, ejaculation. Some of you guys are going to be dumb enough to have your wives watch this video. And so if you're a woman watching this video right now, God bless you, uh, you know, I'm full of hooey, but listen, if you want to understand your guy, just remember that this is what's driving him at all times, and if he doesn't agree with me, he's a liar. He's driven by the impetus toward foreplay, toward intercourse, and toward ejaculation. The candy, the flowers, him vacuuming the room, or mysteriously washing the dishes, what's driving that? Foreplay, intercourse, and ejaculation. And so when you study the male br brain, um, MRI and CAT scans will show that once ejaculation occurs, much of his brain activity in every area comes to an abrupt end. And this is because much of the male brain works toward a common goal. It has a task imperative and, and male sexuality approaches sex in the same way that it approaches bagging a deer, basically. It's a hunt. Sex is wired in the male brain to be a goal-oriented activity. What are the goals? Foreplay, intercourse, and ejaculation. Male sexuality then approaches the, the task of sex in this way. And sex is wired in the male brain to be a goal-oriented activity. Once the male sexual goal has concluded in ejaculation, the levels in all three of these hormonal levels drops and his level of oxytocin or oxytocin rises and he enters a neural rest state known as zoning out. And I'll explain oxytocin in just a minute. So, how are we doing on time, friend? You got about five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, that's good because we're going to talk for just a moment on chemicals we don't really have enough of. Oxytocin is a bonding hormone. 
And just as testosterone levels are much higher in males and females, oxytocin levels are much higher in females than in males, over 10 times as high. Serotonin is also another. The secretion of serotonin is stimulated uh, by the hypothalamus. Serotonin calms and provides impulse control. Both men and boys have less serotonin levels than women. And so more impulsive and they're more task oriented, they're more risk oriented. They react to perceived threats by using physical responses rather than a woman who might first resort to talking someone out of something. So that's uh, male hormones, real high on testosterone and uh, real high on dopamine, real high on vasopressin, real low on oxytocin and serotonin, the bonding hormones. Not that we're incapable of bonding, we just do it differently. Women on the other hand, female hormones, the chauffeur that drives a female hormonal bus is called estrogen. And estrogen is the foremost female hormone, and it's to females what testosterone is to males, it develops the physical and the biological changes in a woman necessary to prepare her for childbearing. And uh, this hormone exists in much lower levels in males. Estrogen gives women an overall feeling of contentment, while testosterone does that for men. And it plays a major role in a woman's nurturing and nest defending behaviors. Now what's in the female bus of estrogen? Uh, one of the passengers is progesterone. And progesterone is a female bonding hormone, like almost every hormone in a woman. It exists biologically to bond the female uh, with her infant, to bond the female body to the body of the infant, to whom the female is required to give care. Both women and girls are driven by this hormone while males lack this hormone in their system to a large extent. Progesterone is released when a woman merely sees a baby. In fact, brain research has shown that merely seeing something shaped like a baby will trigger the release of this body hormone. The female reaction to a baby shape is so strong that this hormone is also released when both women and girls see something shaped like a baby. Matter of fact, if you had a whole bunch of uh, shaped uh, dolls here, you got some dolls shaped like Woody in Toy Story. Um, a woman with an angular shaped doll like Woody or, or other kinds of things, she doesn't feel any release of progesterone. But if she has a little baby, some little fat thing, a little fat little puppy dog or a little kitty, she immediately begins to react to this. When a girl or a woman picks up a teddy bear and says, Oh, it's so cute! Oh, the kind of little bit of a head of boo! At the very moment, their bloodstream is being flooded with progesterone. Men lack progesterone. They do not understand progesterone, period. And then serotonin, the bonding hormone, is secreted in much higher levels in women than in men. And it's an immensely powerful brain chemical that pacifies and calms its host and provides impulse control. It's the feel-good emotion or chemical in women. And the male brain secretes about 20 to 50 percent less of this than women. As a result, men are more impulsive. They take more risk and react to situations more aggressively. Oxytocin is another in a woman's brain that uh, it, uh, it affects her in ways that cause her to cry more, feel more, empathize more, want to protect more. And the last is prolactin. Females have an increased level of this hormone as well, and it, it's among other things something that controls the production of the flow of breast milk and tears. In fact, uh, the age of 15-year-old girl's tear glands secrete 60% more tears than men. So here's the point then. Male physiology is such that to males uh, in the male brain, the hormonal chemistry, it's all hardwired for action, performance, risk-taking, objectifying behavior with a masculine hormone cocktail filled with high amounts of non-bonding, low impulse, high flight and fight. Women, on the other hand, have brains and chemicals that give them a high nesting, mothering, cuddling, bonding, helping hormone. Men are hunters, women are hens. Okay? So deal with that for a while and be very careful how you quote me when you share this with your wives. God bless you guys. We'll see you a little bit later. Bye-bye.